Hello everybody, it's SF Logic Ninja here, or you can call me David Earl, I don't care. Um, really quick one for you, because I actually have a moment where they, they let me out for a second. They uh, they took the shackles off, and the, they nobody. Uh, working on a really big video game right now. Um, that's been uh, a lot of work. Working seven days a week, and uh, really long days, but it's and I really hope that you guys all get a chance to um, to play it. And I can't announce it yet, so I'll uh, I'll let you know when I can. Anyway, so today I wanted to talk about something, and uh, I know I was going to review the Pro, the Axiom Pro 61, and I know uh, there's a lot of other content I want to get to, but this one's actually really important for those of you who are doing uh, film scores and things like that. If you're using the Play Engine by East West, or if you're using BFD2, or if you're using uh, any um, plugin that can be used standalone, um, sometimes that can uh, be a really good thing to do because Logic internally has a RAM ceiling, and if you pass that RAM ceiling, uh, it'll all crap out. And a lot of these third-party plugins, if you use them inside of Logic, they will very quickly exceed the uh, RAM allocation that. Uh, logic has going on. So um, basically what I did to try and get around that because I'm doing big orchestral stuff now and uh, to get the play engine by East West to work uh, you have to use it standalone because if you use it within logic it'll actually crash logic because um, and I'm not gonna blame East West for this and I'm not gonna blame Apple for this I'm not sure exactly where the tie-up is but I know what the solution is and for those of you who um, who are using those plugins and using plugins, these really large plugins where um, the, the clear indicator whether you need to do this or not is if you open a plugin within Logic and one of your processors, let's say you have four processors, one of them spikes, um, this is when you need to consider this workflow option. So, all of that aside, um, let's do it. So the first thing you're going to want to do is you're going to want to go to your audio MIDI setup um, I have it under my recent items, but you'll find it in your utility folder. And we're going to look at this thing called the IAC driver. What the IAC driver does is it allows you to create a fake MIDI port uh, that's basically going to transmit MIDI information back and forth between any application that you have open that sees core MIDI. Um, so if I go in here and say devices online, I'm going to come down to this port. Now, you can create as many ports as you want. So there are 16 channels per port. So for instance, if you were using the Play Engine or if you were using some external plugin like Contact by Native Instruments or Reactor or something, and you needed to be able to send it uh, more than 16 MIDI channels worth of information, you can actually create another port here just by hitting the Add button. But in this case, I'm just going to use Bus1. Now I'm going to name Bus1 UV IAC because I downloaded this free shell um, for uh, called UV Workstation because uh, I wanted you guys to be able to do this at home. All right, so I'm going to hit return, and then now I'm going to open up the UV Workstation. Uh, this is a free download, and then they have all their libraries that you can plug into it. So I haven't actually listened to their stuff yet. It was just it was free, and I wanted to show you guys something. So don't necessarily endorse the product yet, but uh, it's pretty neat that they have this shell for free. So uh, electric piano, I got that loaded up. Now if I go up to file, audio MIDI settings, you'll see that core audio for audio, right? And then we have routing, and then we have MIDI devices. Now if you notice there's only two ports available because I have nothing plugged into this computer right now. IAC driver is plugged in though. Cool. So now I'm going to open up Logic. So Logic's going to automatically see the new IAC bus and it's going to call it an external instrument. And there it is right there. 
So if we go to channel one, I can just double click. Then if I open up, say, the caps lock keyboard, then this is sending MIDI information over to the UVI workstation, which is here. Say electric piano. I think I just drag it in there. There's a volume, yada yada. Now, of course, oh, very important step. Um, I need to make sure that in my environment window, under click and ports, the IAC bus is there as well. I need to connect only the thing that I want to send MIDI. Right. So there we go. So now this keyboard is sending MIDI to the UVI workstation, channel one. And that's basically how you set up um, a standalone program to see MIDI from Logic. Now it's still playing through the audio, the core audio driver, which is coming out of my speakers, right? So I kind of wanted to go back into Logic. Um, to do that, you can use this program called Soundflower, um, specifically Soundflower Bed, all one word. And um, that allows you to route audio like you routed MIDI with the IAC bus. You're able to essentially send audio back and forth between programs, kind of like Rewire does. However, in this case, instead of having one program, Rewire, which handles both, you're going to be using the IAC bus internally to send MIDI back and forth. And then you're going to be using Soundflower Bed to route the audio from your standalone, in this case, UVI workstation, into Logic so that it comes into Logic's mixer. And then in Logic Mixer, you would just say auxiliary, create an auxiliary, say one and two, and one and two will be automatically mapped to uh, via Soundflower Bed. One and two will automatically be what that synth plays through. Now the caveat to that is that Soundflower Bed takes over your physical inputs. So if you jacked a guitar in, you would not be able to record the guitar. But in uh, one thing that's kind of neat, is in Logic 9 now, they actually give you in the sound audio device settings, they give you a separate output device setting from your input device. So if I had Soundflower Bed installed on this computer, it would come up there. Um, but I just wanted to, I had a second to kind of get away for a second. This is not going to be the slickest video I ever did, but um, I think you guys will appreciate it, and especially guys who are working in film and stuff like that. Um, I'm hoping to get another video up this weekend, but uh, I'm really sorry that, you know, I <laughs> kind of, the stuff that I'm going to be able to show you once I'm kind of let free a little bit, because I'm a little under contract right now, so it's been, it's been, uh, there's a lot of stuff I want to show you that I can't show you yet, but this is something that I'm using specifically on this game, and uh, once you see how I use it in its full regalia, um, I think you'll you really get a pretty big kick out of it. Um, for doing orchestral composition, it's the bomb. Anyway, and it solves a huge problem for those of you who are um, having big problems with your processor overloading. So take care, and I'll talk to you later. Ciao.